Alrighty guys, what we're going to do is our first video for AP Physics, the Terminal Velocity Lab Data Analysis. Now what I'm going to do overall is take my numbers and show you how I got these nice pretty graphs. What I'm going to do is first explain what we're doing overall, why we're doing it, and then I'm going to show you step by step. So the first thing overall is what we call linearization of the data, meaning how can I manipulate the data where the correlation value is that closer to 1? Because it would be a correlation of 1, perfect correlation. Now, if I graph weight versus terminal velocity, I'm going to zoom in on that a little bit, what we find out is that my R squared value, my correlation value, is 1 point, sorry, 0.818. Now, that's not a super strong correlation, and plus, if we did more data points, you could see that my graph is going to go this direction while my line is going to go that way. So that tells me my correlation value is, if we have more data points, would be much, much, much lower. However, if I hop over to here, where we do weight versus terminal velocity squared, we found out my correlation value is 0.964, a lot stronger. And we'd see that my data would be much more agreeable to stay consistent with that line, that linear regression. So how do we get this data? Where does it come from? And what can we do with it? So why do we velocity versus velocity squared? And that is from our pre-lab. So our pre-lab talked about two formulas. The force of drag would be equal to negative BV, or the force due to drag would be negative c v squared, where vt is terminal velocity. Now, then you're talking about which one produces the better correlation. Well, how do we get these in our graphs? Well, if I'm looking just to get negative b by itself, what I'm going to then say is, okay, we're going to ignore that force drag is upwards, and we're going to then call this weight. Weight equals then BVT. That negative is lost because weight's downwards. All right. Now force of drag is weight CVT squared. Okay. Now, where did that come from? Well, that came from in your free body diagram of your object falling at terminal velocity. That means weight is equal to force drag. Right? If the objects on an, if the forces on an object are balanced, that means your object is moving at constant velocity. For us, that'll be terminal velocity. Okay. So the next part that we're looking at is how do we do this in a graph? How do we look at my proportionalities? That means B is equal to weight over terminal velocity, and C is equal to weight over terminal velocity squared, all right? Now, in your graphs, if you've done your graphs correctly, one will be looking at weight versus terminal velocity, then we'll look at weight versus terminal velocity squared. So that would be the slope of your line, the change in weight over terminal velocity squared, or the change in weight over velocity, terminal velocity. What I've given you a big hint overall, and already looking at our final answer, of what our data should look like. Now, human error does occur. We see that B is an exponential relationship. All right? We cannot do these in this class because that requires calculus. That's looking at the derivative, the looking at the slope of a line as time is changing on. Well, in order to do that, you need calculus. We're not going to use it. So in order to do that, we have to, it's called linearize our data. So this allows us to look at things in a nice, pretty way. All right. This, we can now cal calculate the slope of this line. Change of, uh, or change of weight over, change of terminal velocity squared. And we could get C. All right, C being our constant. Okay, so how do we do this in 
Google Sheets. So what I'm going to do is I will post a template that looks very similar to this on Schoology. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to duplicate this sheet, delete all the data, and if I did it correctly, it should look like this, the first original sheet when I'm done. All right. So first thing I'm going to do, delete my pretty work. All right. You know, mass your filters. I'm going to make this do all the calculations for me. So your raw data is I'm going to go ahead and delete these rows. Let's see if I can do everything just from this table. So the mass of six filters for me is 5.4 grams. So the mass of one filter would be this number divided by six. Okay. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, so now I've got the mass of one filter, mass in kilograms. So to find weight, what you do is you take mass, click on B2, times, I'm going to hit Shift 8, is that a star? So Shift 8, times 9.81. Okay, this is my average weight of one filter in newtons. So now what I'm going to do is type in my numbers of mass and weight. So mass is going to equal... 0 .00, 0 0 0.0009. Okay. I'm going to hit equals. It's going to be 0 0.009. Oh, actually, I need to talk about the first point data point. In your lab, it talks about how you can use the point 0, 0. Because if <clears throat> weight is 0, terminal velocity is 0, we can use the point 0, 0 in our data. This will help us a whole lot when coming at that lab analysis. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my average mass of the filter, which is 0 0.0009 times my number of filters. Ooh, we could have just typed that in, right? But if I drag this down, it will do all of my math for me. Oh, I didn't drag that down correctly. Let's try this again. Uh, see what I'm going to have to type in 0 0.009. 0 0.009. Okay. Now I'm going to drag down. It does all the math for me. It took that number, which I put in, that static number, times the number of filters. There we go. So weight equals mass, which is right next to it, times gravity, 9.81. Drag down, there we go. Now, we're going to do terminal velocity. Well, if this thing is going the same speed the whole time, the whole point of dropping it above the two meter mark, we're going to take our time, sorry, our height, two meters, divided by time. So my terminal velocity is 0.87. Drag it down, there we go. Next part is terminal velocity squared. So I'm going to equals terminal velocity next to it, shift 6, that's the caret symbol, which is for, to the power of 2, drag it down as well. I just made Google Sheets do all my calculations for me. Now I'm going to click off to the side, make sure I'm not clicking on a cell, and I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see some of our other buttons. What you can do is you can click insert chart or there's a shortcut button right here for chart. Insert chart. It's going to pop up no data. Well, it doesn't know what data we want to use. You can try highlighting the data, but since we have so many sets of data, it might try to do the job for you. And so let's have if I try to do that. If I try to highlight the information I want, and I hit chart, well, It graphed terminal velocity versus weight. That's the backwards of what I want. So I don't like using that form, that auto fill in. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Okay, get out of here. All right. Click on an empty cell. Insert chart. No data. 
drag this down here so I can see it a little more appropriately. First thing I'm going to do is click the chart type. I'm going to click. So how do I get that chart editor? Double click. Chart editor pops up on the right side. Scroll down, click chart type, scatter. Because we're going to draw a line of best fit, we're going to see all of our data points. Click series first. Do not click x-axis first because the way Google Sheets works, it'll try to do things for you automatically. We don't want that. So I'm going to click series. That's the same thing as my y values. So my y values, I want to be my weights. Okay, hit OK. Now I need to do x-axis data. I'm going to click x-axis and that's going to be terminal velocity for my first graph. Hit OK. Hey, looking pretty nice. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click over to <coughs> Click over to Customize, Chart, and Access Titles. So I'm going to click chart, chart Title, and we're going to title this. This will be Weight versus Terminal Velocity. No. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click chart, this little chart title again. Now I'm going to access, Horizontal Axis Title. My Horizontal Axis, that's going to be Terminal Velocity, so Terminal Velocity. meters per second. Vertical axis, that's going to be weight, and that's recorded in newtons. And now we've seen is that some of this stuff is starting to pop up, looking a little cleaner. All right, last piece. How do I get that regression line? I'm going to click series, trend line, show our squared value. So I'm going to do that again. So we click series, drop down menu, scroll down, and you'll see trend line, scroll down more, show our squared value. Okay. We've got our first graph. Now we're going to do the same thing again. Click an empty cell, click do chart. Don't like how it's in my face, so I'm going to rescale it, drag it to more appropriate area in the graph. And then let's pick our type, our chart type, scatter. Series, my Y values is going to be weight again. So highlight weight in the whole column. Click OK. Click my X axis, which is going to be terminal velocity. Customize, going to add in my chart titles really quickly. I've shown you this before. So it's weight versus terminal velocity squared. Click chart title. Well, now let's go to horizontal. And that is horizontal is going to be terminal velocity squared. That's meters per second. Power two. Click on that, make a vertical axis. This is going to be weight, which was recorded in Newtons. Now I'm going to go click on series, series, trend line, R values. Okay, so here's what I've got so far, and here's what I want you to be able to show me. With your data, I want you to show me, let's see if I got the same numbers. Hey, look at that. We're showing you the same numbers. Sorry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to post on Google Sheets. I'm going to post this exact spreadsheet. You're going to be able to see all of my data and how I did what I did, including this video. And I want to see your R squared values. And I want to see for both weight versus velocity and weight versus velocity squared. And we can see that this makes a nice linear relationship. R squared value of 0.964. R squared value of 0.818. All right. And that's what I'm looking for in this table. If you run into any problems while I'm gone, just sit tight and I'll be back. Good luck. May the odds ever be in your favor.